Well, Jan, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. Before we dive into all the good stuff, why don't I hand over to you so you can introduce yourself to the audience? Thank you, Henriette. I'd love to. Right. I am Jan Cavell, indeed. I was an entrepreneur for many, many years. Um, and when I retired, I'd been writing articles for a long time on business for various places. So when I retired, I decided after about two weeks that I was bored and that I would go back to writing, which I adored, and start writing books about business instead, which is what I do nowadays. I know. And we're going to talk a little bit later on about the second book that is coming out very soon. Um, but I'm a little bit curious because obviously with your experience as an entrepreneur, you also have a huge sales background experience and that combined with your writing. So tell us a little bit, how did you get started as an entrepreneur? What was that like for you? What was your journey all about? Well, I, I, I mean, we're going about many, many moons on our, I, it sort of drifted in between jobs <clears throat> because I hated being employed. And uh, a lot of those jobs, like any sort of short-term employee, tended to be sales ones because people will still take sales employees for if they can sell for short periods of time. So I learned for a degree about how to sell, uh, which, which actually proved to be an enormous asset. I then took a few sort of short short form of the story. I then drifted into, I guess, microbiz from uh, from there, from being a sort of semi-employed to going self-employed to having one or two of us. And then eventually, uh, when I ended up being a single mom with two small kids, I decided to focus on building a business to provide a better future for them, really. Yeah. So, so that was where it all came from, and and my only real skill per se was selling. So it had to be selling something, and and that was a basis for the whole thing. That I could work from home, and I could telephone sell something. Yeah. So that's that's brilliant, and that obviously led you now to writing your second book, which um, we'll talk about a little bit later on. And I'm sure, you know, even with that, that is such a huge achievement because there's a lot of people out there who's like, oh, I want to write a book. And here you are on your second one. And some people haven't even started on their <laughs> first one. So hats off to you. Well, thank you. Let's dive in. Let's talk about the selling element. But this is something that you and I are going to be very specific about. And the reason I love this topic that you want to share with us today is something that is very close to my heart because I get this question all the time when I work with my clients is how do we compare or in another word, what is the difference between price and value? Well, it's a funny one, isn't it? I, I love it as a topic too, firstly, because it's one that so many people misunderstand. Yeah. And if I can switch on the odd light bulb, it's, it's always really rewarding to do so. People, firstly, struggle with sales because of low self-worth. Mm. So firstly, if they are low in confidence, it's very easy for them to assume that their value is low. Therefore, what they do, the value is low and gets thoroughly browbeaten. So that's at one end of the spectrum, and we can always revisit that. The other end of the spectrum is people who say, well, I mean, you know, I've talked to this client today and, and you know, it's just ridiculous. I've trained for 20 years in this and they're trying to pay me X. And to them, I would say, well, yeah, understandably, I get where you're coming from. But it's like saying, shall I hire uh, an elephant trainer because he's got 20 years experience when well, I want to know about training dolphins? Mm. It's no use whatsoever unless the client wants whatever it is you're offering, however much experience you have. Yeah. So, so that begins to reveal the difference between price and value. It's not the price you put on your years of experience. It's about the value you have to somebody who might buy it, which has to be relevant to them firstly. And I love how you put the two, um, two spectrums together because I think, you know, on the one end, the majority of the clients that I've come across is where they feel they can't sell 
yes. the low confidence. Yeah. And, you know, I think for a lot of us, we kind of feel that, hey, I'm not a salesperson. I can't sell. This is not the thing that I'm doing. But what we kind of lack to understand, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is that that confidence in selling is actually just a skill that you can learn by doing it again and again and again. I think it certainly is to some extent. I think also the first thing you've got to separate out is, okay, you've got lousy self-confidence. I can sympathize with that. Anybody who's listening who's saying that right now, I had terribly low self-confidence for a lot of my career. However, if you believe in what you're selling, you can have confidence in that. And that is what you need to use and draw on it doesn't matter uh, what you feel about you yeah uh, and so con- concentrate on how much you love this product how much or service how much you believe that that will do your client good and that will give you the oomph and the confidence to to carry you over and past that yeah and i think the other thing is but of course a lot of people think that selling is really grotty and something nasty to do and it has this bad rep which it does uh, again you need to dump that because the bad salespeople now don't really get anywhere i mean how many of us get these awful emails on linkedin you know hi i know i've just connected to you but you know um uh, and i know you're an author but can i write for you well you know uh, no, I don't need somebody who writes for me. I might need other services, but actually I don't need somebody to do the writing. You know, they just, people don't think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if you're really going to sell that badly, you deserve the bad rep. But you're not. It's somebody who is listening and wanting to learn and passionate about their product is going to actually build a relationship with a client focused on delivering value. Yeah. And that's a good thing. You know, it's going yeah. to do their clients good. Yeah. And it's so true what you're saying, because the one thing I always share with my clients is first about how to create that enticing package, as I call it, or that service yes. that you're offering, how to add value to it, but at the same time, making sure that it's aligned with you, because it's just like you said, if you don't believe in what it is that you're selling, you're not going to have the confidence to sell it. Absolutely. So that is the one thing that I always look at. And I just love the way we're talking because I just feel, you know, as I said, this is what I want to share with people. Absolutely. It's about having value in what it is that you're offering, but also having the confidence in what you're selling. And in my, from my perspective, it's got to be aligned with you. It's got to be yeah. aligned with, you know, everything that you're doing in every part of your being. Otherwise, you're not going to want to sell it. <laughs> exactly. I think that's so right. You know, how can you possibly have confidence in something yeah. that isn't a good fit yeah. with you, with your core? Yeah. So... What is the one thing that you would love people to understand? Because I think, you know, when it comes to pricing, let's say our services, a lot of people kind of get scared and say, oh, gosh, I'm not quite sure if I can put up my price. Um, I'm not quite sure if people will pay me for this. So they actually go the opposite way and put their pricing down. But from your perspective, you know, what is it that you would like people to understand about pricing their services? Well, I think one of the first things to understand is that the old price objection, as it's called, you know, the, oh, you're too expensive, so I'm not going to buy, is actually rarely the truth. Um, it's, it's a funny one. People use it because it's the easiest one. They expect you to go away and shut up. And, you know, what they're actually saying is, I'm not convinced I ought to buy it. Or they could be saying... I'm up for a damn good haggle here. Mm. But saying, actually, I can't afford it. If I mean, unless you've got a really crummy um, marketing process where you're filling your funnel with people who are totally unsuitable, you should have got rid of most of those people who can't afford, genuinely can't afford it yeah. if they wanted it badly enough, which is a different thing. Yeah. So, So the price objection is a bit of a fallacy to start with. Yeah, it's very interesting because as you're saying that, it makes me realize that um, I had a conversation with a student because I was delivering a talk at the University College of London one day. And one of the students approached me and said, 
you know, he's got this product, he's got this little um, side hustle that he's running and he's got this product, but nobody's buying from me. So he kept putting the prices down and down and down. And I actually went to him and I said, because you're putting the prices down, you were attracting the wrong quality client. You should put your prices up. Yeah. And, and I said to him, just, you know, I just plucked a figure out of the air. And I said, just do it for something like 97 pounds or 197 pounds. Yeah. But his eyes just started, you know, getting bigger and bigger. He's like, oh, really? Should I put it up that much? And I was like, well, I'm just giving you figures here, but you need to understand what we've just talked about, the value that it is that you're offering. Exactly. But the thing that I find is the more you put your prices down, the more you're attracting the wrong quality and the wrong type of clients. And from your Absolutely. experience, how, how do you feel about that? Very much so. I mean, unless you're Poundland and you're selling deliberately on a price differential. Yeah. But that has to be extreme. And most of us can't afford to, but even if we wanted to, to be a Poundland. You know, so so no, I think there's there's lots of things about putting your prices down. You know, it's also the same as when you you do feel a bit desperate for a sale or a bit weak one day or whatever reason, and you get this client who badges and badges at you for a discount, and you give them a huge discount, and you know, you go, okay, I've got a sale. They will be the client who gives you the most hassle every mm-hmm. single time, because what they've just done is bully you. And they will have already thought, you're an easy target. So I'm going to bully some more. They'll be the ones who want more money off, more discounts later on, complain more about whatever you've provided. You know, it, it is just a client you, you really don't want. And if you've given away the power altogether and you just feel you can't get it back, I would actually seriously, seriously advise you get rid of that client because you're just giving yourself a massive great boulder on your back i know i know and you know what i think this is the other thing um that i share with my clients about discounts is if you are signing up client for the first time do not offer discounts i mean yes no. unless you're selling a product and you, there's a promotion going on or something like that that's completely understandable but if you're offering a service in particular a high ticket service never give a discount when you're signing up a client for, this, for the first time absolutely because absolutely. i feel the discount has got that energy of desperation yeah which is a negative energy it just undervalues you yeah yeah, I agree. If you're putting together a sort of sales package with um, perhaps for a B2B, um, I don't know, a retailer or whatever, uh, you know, you may decide that you want to give extras on top. Mm-hmm. But even then, you never, never want to give them early. You know, save until the very last minute and you've nearly got that client over the line and then say, I'll tell you what, if I chuck in that, can we shake on the deal? Hmm. But if you give them away really early, again, you know, A, you're emptying your arsenal. You've given away something for nothing and you've given away lots of power to them. Yeah. It's about energy again that you're talking yeah, about. Absolutely. Hmm. And I find that, um, you know, this comes back to what we said earlier on about putting prices down. The same applies for a discount. So, yeah. you know, when you put your prices down, your energy shifts again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. You know, and, and there really is no need for it, you know, because if somebody wants something and is a match to your marketing sort of segmentation that you, you've got somebody who can probably afford it and you've given them enough value to want it badly enough, they will pay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen this time and time again. I remember I've worked with this one client and we got a really big package together for her. And um, and she was laughing when we put the price up because there's so much value added to this. Yeah. She was laughing. She's like, nobody would buy this. Nobody would buy this. This is crazy. And I said to her, just go out there. And I gave her the structure and everything. And I said, go out there. You can now sell this. Mm. And she had somebody who had a call scheduled with her. And she said to me, listen, I'm going to go on this call. I'm just going to try it out. And I said, yeah. Even if they don't sign up, see this as a learning experience, an opportunity for you to learn and to say out loud, what your packages are costing absolutely and literally 15 minutes after that call she i got a message saying i sold my most expensive package the client said yes yeah and i think it just comes back down to that confidence that we said in the beginning but also understanding that 
hey, if somebody signed up once for one of your enticing and, and you know, even one of your most expensive packages, you can do it again and oh, again yeah. and again. Definitely. It's a copy cut. It's like a, 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 what do they call it? A cookie cutter recipe <laughs> almost. <laughs> Absolutely. It was not a fluke. It was actually the structure yeah. in what you did. Yeah. But at the same time, it comes back down to that energy about not giving discounts, understanding what the value is that you're offering versus the yeah. price. And that's really important, um, yeah. you know, to, to understand that value. And uh, an entrepreneur I talked to for, for some research for my last book describes it, but uh, you've got to look at the client and, and decide whether they've got uh, an itchy leg or their hair's on fire. <laughs> and I, I love, love that. that. That is such a good thing to do. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, because, you know, for the moment they've got a hair on fire, they're going to pay. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, if you can only give them a tickle, it's not going to really push them over the line. Yeah, no, it's not. Definitely not. So from your experience, what do you find kills people's sales potential then? Oh, goodness. I think lots of things. I think, firstly, their own belief that if they're doing something awful, you know, that's the biggest. I mean, I've had, um, you know, potentially very good salespeople say to me, oh, I don't know, I don't want to do sales. I'd rather do customer service because I want to help people. I mean, majority of, of companies, customer service people are negotiators. They're hard-nosed settling a dispute. Frankly, it's a much harder job than sales, you know, whereas, uh, you know, the, so, the, so a good salesperson will help their clients. They will view it as an, a negotiation that benefits both parties. Mm. And I think that's really important to remember. And at the moment they start thinking pound signs and I'm going to just nail this deal because I want the money or the deal led the line. You know, but just destined for a very short relationship yeah. with their clients. Yeah. And I think this kind of leads on to the other thing is as well to think about, you know, um, I think people in if it has got this mindset that they constantly need to go out there to sign up new clients, new clients, new clients. Yeah. And yes, that's a good thing, but then we lose complete focus about our existing clients or the recurring clients. Very good Which point. It's it's easier to sell to your recurring clients than it is to mm. your to, to brand new clients. So, you know, from your kind of experience, do you feel that everybody should have a recurring client strategy, so to speak? Oh, undoubtedly. And and also, you know, monitor the who the quality of your clients because yeah. there's that whole thing which i'm sure you know of, of um you know for 80 percent of your revenue will come for if, if the old 80 20 rule which applies to so many of things but in this case about 80 percent of your revenue will come from your top 20 percent of your clients um you know which means that if you're not very careful you end up servicing huge numbers of customers who give you very little and take up all your time and drain all your energy and whereas you could be focusing on developing even further that top 20 percent and maybe sifting through the less promising to see if there are any other gems lurking that you can promote with a yeah. bit of encouragement and love yeah and and it comes back down to i'm sorry i'm saying this again but it comes down to, to that energy isn't it yeah yeah, because so. the amount of energy it takes in order to sell to somebody new is far greater than it is the amount of energy to sell to a uh, existing client who Very you much so. already and, you know, and had a relationship too. with. Mm. Absolutely, it's energy, cost, everything. You know, you think yeah. of your whatever your um, client acquisition figure is, and how much it costs from you know day one of your marketing right through the sales funnel. You know, you're talking a lot of money. Whereas mm -hmm. if you've got that client who is just circling around and coming back down again, you know, with just a bit of love, that's where you want to be. I know, I know. And this is, you know, this is where I get so excited because there's so many things you can do out there in order to sign up the new clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then also to have that recurring client strategy in place, which actually this is where things become fun in business. This is where you can really see the potential where you can really grow. But again, you know, all of these things need to work together. They got to be aligned with you and you've got to understand Absolutely. what that process is that you need to have in place. 
Absolutely. And, you know, but it only takes little things, yeah. you know, just that gesture of the unasked for, unexpected to make a, a client feel really treasured. Yeah, absolutely. And that we can even talk about on a separate podcast because that is a whole nother story yeah, all on its yeah. own. But oh my gosh, Jan, I just love this conversation. I'm sure the audience here is taking so many notes, or I hope they are, because you know, this this is something that I find is so powerful. Once you understand this, you can run any business, you can sell any service, any products, even. But these are the foundations of just getting out there and building relationships, attracting people to you and just converting them and, you know, selling, but not just selling per se, but the value that it is that you're offering, because that's, I would say, step number one, more than anything. Yeah. I mean, you've got to understand what you're, what's special about what you're doing, yeah. or, you know, your product, your service. Why are you of more value than the person down the road or whoever else is doing that and what is going to be offered to your customers which they can't get elsewhere if you don't understand yourself they're never going to yeah absolutely because if you don't understand something how can you articulate it to another person exactly simple as that yeah oh my gosh jan honestly we can talk for hours just on this topic alone (laughs) But I would love to hear a little bit about your new book, which is now out and about. Tell us a little bit about the book and what it's all about. Yeah, 25th of January. I'm just sort of of recovering from from the whole thing. It seems to have have been a a long project, this one. It's called Start for Success. And it is for anyone really thinking about starting a business or growing in the first sort of right up to a couple of million people will get something out of it I've had some lovely reviewers who've been kind enough to say you know I remember my first business and they've been 20 years in the game and I still yet I still get something out of it which um, is lovely so I'm hoping that pretty well anybody can read it and get things out of it Um, but what I wanted to do I'm a huge fan of peer learning love it you know these conversations like you and I having you know you can just get so much out of and I wanted to see if I could package that effect in a book so I've got um, an enormous quantity of anecdotes from entrepreneurs all over the world which illustrate a lot of the points I'm making because I try and cover most of the topics that people are going to need but it it hopefully brings it alive and, and people have been so kind. They've given me wonderful stories that, you know, any entrepreneurs would get that are just so different and funny and sad and, you know, all these things that make it to, to me. I mean, I love reading the stories myself, so yeah. hopefully people will enjoy. Yeah, but I think the main thing is, is that it's not just coming from your experience, it's coming from all of these other individuals, individuals who's made Absolutely. success, Another and 70. sharing their stories, and also learning from them, you know, seeing what it is that they've done. Because I think, you know, for everybody listening or watching this video, there's so many elements of where we're at now versus where other people are at in their business. And if you can learn and take some of these stories and relate to them, and you see some things that are just sequenced through, you go, oh my gosh, here's the answer. This is the thing that I've been looking for for so long. You never know. Absolutely. You never know where that answer could come from. It's it's that light bulb moment that you suddenly identify. I mean, you know, it's five stories, Mike. Okay, yeah. But, you know, then you get one and you think, oh, my goodness, you know, I can go and apply that tomorrow and I know exactly how that feels and why have I never thought of that? Yeah. Or, or, you know, if that happens to somebody else, it's not just me, it's another one. Yeah, absolutely. But I think this was my, what makes it so much value with this book. Again, there's the word value uh, with this good. book, <laughs> with this book and how you put it together. And I think, you know, um, everybody will definitely gain something from it. So what we're going to do for those of you listening or watching this video, the link for this book will be available on Amazon and this will be below in the show notes. You can Obviously, go and click there, getting, you know, get direct access to it, and then obviously go and get hold of the book. Um, and then also, what we'll do is Jan's social media links will be available there as well. Okay. So you can go and connect with her. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to her. I'm sure she's more than happy. I'll be pitched to talk to you. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is why we're doing what we're doing, right? Mm. It's about having a conversation, it's about have, helping other people out at the end of the day. And I feel that just from our conversation today, 
you know, we're offering value in turn to everybody watching and listening. And you're taking that extra step by making your book available as well. So everybody can go and learn a little bit more there. But I just wanted to thank you so much for just coming on, sharing all of your expertise and knowledge. And I wish you every bit of success with the launch thank of you. this book. I know it's going to be amazing. And I'm thank definitely going so to have much. a look at it myself as well. <laughs> thank you, Henriette. That's lovely. Thank you. And, and thank you for having me on the podcast because it's been a, a great experience. Thank you. You're more than welcome. We'll be in touch very soon again. Look forward to it. <laughs>